Okay. Today I will show you a lesson how to replace the tube, tire and the tube. First of all, you need a special tool for getting out the valve, otherwise you can't do anything here. So, starting point, have it deflated. Of course, we need uh, also a tool, or two tools. You see these here? Good idea to have the two fold length tools, or, or even longer, because this here they have uh, about one and a half, it's 50, centi 50 centimeters. So, first get the tire off the rim. You need just one corner, but this is a pretty exhausting part of the rim. That, that tire here had to be mounted for 10 or 11 years, so it's really fast or tight. Um, it's mostly no way to use the tools for detaching it from the So especially when you have that for a long time, you have all the tires, then you just have to jump on this, and my weight is 80 pounds. Really exhausting work, but remember, you see here this is a plain daytime, so no real trouble. Nobody needs to hold the light. But there is only one way to get it detached just jump on it. When you're alone, somewhere off road or in desert or step on the forest, if you don't have a second car to uh, just driving over it for, for the heavy detached no, you have to jump into them so now it's off the rim at the one side can you see it? now we can use our tools this, uh, Jump two, three more times on it. Now it's getting easier. Just need to have it detached at one point to try in the, in the room. So we have to repeat that procedure on the other side with the tire as well. And it's just business as usual, jump on it until it's detached. So, pull all the weight on one leg to try not to fall off the fell of it. And of course, yeah, it is exhausting, but you have to do it.
so now you see it's detached from the second and then on the inner side as well so I just wanted to show it to you so we so the next step is get the tire off and we will do that on the inner side because then it's easier to, to get the tube with the valve and put the hole on the outer side actually just using a little bit of force and so now I see why you need two tools so first attempt to get it off so be sure you use the proper end So next job is uh, get the tube out. So, so you see that the rim is uh, detached and we have a bit the tire over it. So, so the entire thing has a weight of maybe 60, 65 pounds, that's a 30 kilograms. And, uh, the tube itself is a thick old Russian rubber here. So to get that out, you need it completely deflated. So the valve has to be pulled out or torn out with a special tool I've shown at the beginning. So this here has a weight about six pounds or three kilograms. Solid rubber, twice as thick than needed, but uh, it's bad quality. We have at least a little bit margin of security or comfort when driving. When you want to reuse the tube, you need to be careful. So. It, sometimes it happens that you punctuate it and uh, then you have one two additional holes and unmounting it. Let's say you can fix one two more holes as you see it here. It means that when the rubber is between the rim and the pool, then you have just some more holes and sometimes they are very hard to find. Trust me. So now next job is uh, getting the rim off the tire on the inner side. 
Okay, we have the two tools. You can't use this piece of wood or a screwdriver. You need these special tire mounting tools. They're not very expensive. It's maybe 20 bucks on eBay or wherever you prefer to buy them. And send home and be sure to order them before you plan to replace the first tire. Here in that I have old tires and old tubes and I uh, got new ones for well, 77 euro each and clothing a tube and I uh, got another couple of them 77 euro each without tubes. So, so make sure that the dealer gives you the tubes with them and doesn't tell you stories about oh we don't know nothing about it and sell them elsewhere for 30 euro. So that's ridiculous. In Russia or Mongolia I got the tube for 5 euro, not more.
Okay, next step, mounting the new tire. And uh, we start to put the outer side of the rim into the tire. So the reason is we need to get the valve into the hole. And this is much easier when we do when we put the rubber the same way into it as I dismounted it some minutes before.
So now the job is done, and you see the rim and the new tire from the inner side. Uh, next task is to get the to get the, the tube into it. But uh, the hole is not it is not, not a symmetric position. So you need to find a way to fix it, and um, using welding wire and not space and some copper or whatever you have at hand and uh, then you can fix because you can put the, the valve through the hole for the valve and uh, then you, you have easy way to fix it when putting in the rest of the, the tube and yeah I forgot Unmounting the valve is a good idea to, to have to have it flexible. It's up to you to have the valve in it or not. Just make sure that it's actually it's not inflated. So check if the tool matches, and you, you, when you want to fix it, you put the little cap. On, on on the valve and then you don't risk a detachment so when you have it through the hole. So you see the little hole of the valve and you see the valve on the tube so that's what we want to do. We want to get inside
to melt it off is into its hole and uh, now I am using my prepare tool for tool for fixing it otherwise you can't really fix this without that method there are some people they say inflating the tube is a good idea but you, know, you see there is such a little distance between the rim and uh, the tire then it's better to have it not inflated but then you need to fix the, the valve a little bit And the last task is uh, having the tire mounted under the rim. So this is a really delicate job. You need to be very careful whenever you use the tool that there is no rubber between the rim and the tool. Otherwise you can repeat the procedure here. As you see in the clip, it's about 37 minutes it took me for unmounting and mounting it. You can add some, maybe half an hour for finding the hole, and another 30 minutes for fixing it, and recheck everything, and for sure there are some more holes you can't find when you pressurize the tube outside of the tire. So just make sure that you are very precautious doing this here and uh, that will save you a lot of time in the future so you've seen I was drinking one beer at the beginning and uh, it's a good idea not to drink more otherwise you make errors and of course there is also some rule like don't drink and drive for example
the end of all, you want maybe to inflate it, obviously, and uh, you can get, for example, these small bullets having some, some fire gas in them, but that's not enough. This tube here has a 40 gallons or 160 liters if it's pressurized to 40 psi or for 3 bar. So you can have a big bicycle pump and then work, have, a, have a workout if you just want to, to get your belly more slim. Or you can do a smarter way you buy a little 10 buck compressor that runs on 12 volts and battery. And uh, that can run for about 10, maybe 15 minutes, uh, then it gets hot, but in um, 15 minutes you get about maybe 25 psi, that's one and a half bar. And then, then you can let it run for, let it cool down and run it, let it work for another 10, 15 minutes, and then your tire is uh, pretty well uh, pressurized. 